what's going on YouTube welcome back to my channel as promised in today's video I'm going to be doing a Q&A special to thank all of you guys for helping me achieve 10,000 subscribers so without wasting any time let's just jump straight into the Q&A because I have a lot of questions that I need to answer in today's video so jumping right in with question one it's a simple one what's your forehand grip um, I'm guessing by this he means how I actually hold my racket rather than just using the Wilson grip. Um, I use a semi-western forehand grip. Um, some people might call it an eastern. Uh, Simon from Top Tennis Training refers, it, refers to it as an eastern grip, but some people call it a semi-western. Um, essentially, it's holding the racket. If you have the racket like this with a head, it's coming down on the racket and grabbing the forehand grip like this and hitting in front with the palm of the hand almost. Okay, question two is a very interesting one and I'm actually quite excited to answer this one because I had a lot of trouble as a younger kid dealing with this. So, Zachary says, I'm curious, have you ever had trouble playing your best versus players you know you are supposed to be? Now, like I mentioned before, I have had trouble in the past dealing with this problem because of factors such as nerves, um, expectations, things like that not playing or performing your best on any given day so so I think the number one thing which will help you beating players that you're supposed to be is in my opinion how you approach this will determine the outcome of the match because it is very mental um, for me I learned over the years to just stop caring about what people think um, when I'm playing on the court because I had trouble with that as a junior um, also, just getting rid of any expectations and just trying to focus on what I'm actually meant to do on the court. Lastly, realizing it's just a tennis match. It's nothing more than just um, a competition, a sport, a game. Um, just go out there, play your own game and see how it goes. If you lose, you lose. That's it. There's nothing wrong with losing. If you win, great, you move on to the next round. If, however, you do end up losing, that's okay. There's going to be plenty more matches that you're going to redeem yourself in and that you're going to do well in. Uh, tennis is all about ups and downs and if you fix that mentality and kind of keep a level head and just approach every match as if it's another day um, I don't think you would run into the problem of thinking oh I should beat this opponent I shouldn't beat this opponent maybe I'll lose here maybe I'll win there what are people gonna think of me no that all, all of that is irrelevant it doesn't matter and when I learned that I'm not that special like people don't really care about how I do that's when I started playing my best because I knew that I didn't really care about other people's opinions so I hope that answers your question that's the way I would approach it as well so now when I play people who I'm supposed to beat I just take it as another match and if I lose I lose if I win great good stuff that's how I would approach it okay so the next question is by anonymous hey Johan I was wondering how does the transition from a college graduate to a professional player work exactly which tournaments do you have to play etc okay so when college students are in summer break or winter break they have the opportunity to play matches to play ITF juniors to play ITF men's circuit or to play national tournaments in their home country um, if you would like to achieve a professional level status and would like to go into a career in tennis and playing the ATP I would highly suggest you doing men's futures in between your college seasons now there is some regulations with the NCAA in that sense um, you're not allowed to accept any prize money however you can play the events and get points um, and a lot of college players do that if you're a top D1 player and you want to you know make it into the men's circuit try and play as many futures as you can in between your college career in between seasons and then after your college career I know many people I know some of my friends who have done this they finish college and then they take a year they give themselves a year or two and they just go and live really cheap in an Airbnb and play futures every week for example in Egypt or Morocco or Turkey somewhere there where there's a lot of uh, futures events and they just play week in and week out and try and accumulate points and uh, some people make it and get lucky and you know that something clicks inside their brain and they start winning and start getting the hang of it and then some players collapse mentally and start losing and give up so it's just a very fine line and a balance but if you really want to make it as a pro after college I would say competing as often as possible is your best bet okay this one's an interesting one and a more fun one um, if you could play a match against any pro active or retired who would it be
there's a few players I would really, really love to play. Um, but I would have to say Djokovic, just because I've always wanted to see, like in, just in real, real life, how heavy his ball actually is, because I've heard it's very heavy. And I just want to witness his movement on court and see if I can even just get a point against him, even if he's, if he's playing full out, essentially. Um, so Djokovic will be on my, on my uh, top list. Also would love to play against Dimitrov just because he's my favorite player and I would love to share a court with Dimitrov. And then obviously, obviously the GOAT, Feds, um, just because he is probably one of the most iconic athletes of all time and sharing a court with him would be an amazing experience. So those are the top three, but if I had to pick one, I would say Djokovic. Okay, this is an interesting question, uh, very relatable for this year. I wanted to ask you how COVID-19 has affected you as a college athlete. Um, well, for one, it has ruined our tennis season because of right now in the fall, we're not allowed to be practicing officially or playing any college matches or competitions. And the university has shut down and put everything online. So our whole university experience, our whole college experience is ruined and potentially damaged our training schedule as well. Um, we're still going out with the guys and playing and practicing, but it's not the same as having official practice, you know, and having official weightlifting, you know, etc. Having the whole college experience get taken care of by the university itself. Um, so yeah, it's impacted me physically, I would say. But also mentally, because in the first half of the year, I really was, I didn't know what to do. I was kind of bored, as many of you guys probably were as well. I didn't really have much motivation, didn't know what to do, but I slowly started to build up my routine. And once I got into a solid routine, it was more comfortable for me. And then once I got to Charlotte, I was able to play with my teammates. I'm pretty lucky that this complex is still open um, so we can train. But um, yeah, it's, it sucked. And uh, I hope everything works out soon so that everything can resume and we can have our college experience again. And I'm sure all athletes in America can relate to this all college athletes because most of us are going online and our season and you know the respective seasons have been cancelled okay this is a long one uh comes from olivia me and my friends love the tennis dream merchandise that was featured in your older videos i was wondering where we can purchase this amazing merchandise um i've never actually sold any merchandise um let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in doing i just don't really want to monetize my viewers um that's just not something I really have an intention of doing. But if you guys are willing and are interested in purchasing tennis stream merchandise, let me know. Um, but that hoodie that I used to have was just something like a one-off that I used to wear um, to support myself, really. Um, and I was 17, so I decided to do it. It was a bit cringy, but it's all right. But yeah, let me know if you guys wanna, wanna have uh, tennis stream merchandise. And thank you, Olivia, for the, for the question. Okay, next question. Next question comes from Ryan Kennedy. How do you recommend training without a coach? Of course, training without a coach isn't as effective as training with one, but there is stuff that you can do to help your game. Also, it depends what level you are. Um, for a beginner or an intermediate player or a junior player, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you going without a coach. But if you're starting to get into the college level or above or ATP level, futures level, you could go without a, a coach, um, but you're just gonna have to be very, very disciplined in your training schedule and your programming. And you're gonna have to know a lot about the game as well yourself. Um, I would recommend either purchasing a ball machine, having a good network of people that you can train with and having an idea about fitness and nutrition. Those are the main three, I would say. And then also taking care of your body, such as stretching, recovering, foam rolling, all of these things because no one's on your back to tell you what to do. You just have to be responsible and professional and do it yourself. Also, maybe purchasing a camera like I do because I learn a lot about my game just watching over film. So if you guys do have the money for it or just record on your iPhone, maybe watching your training sessions will help you as well because you can fix some of the things that you don't consciously think about when you're doing, when you're playing tennis. This one's a pretty simple one. What tennis strings do you use? Um, my favorite string is the Selenko Hyper G currently, and that's what I play when uh, we are in season. Uh, but right now I'm just using strings w which were left over by the coach in our locker room. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Selenko Hyper G lasts 
around two, three, four practice sessions and uh, for me they're, they feel comfortable. So that's what I use and those are my favorite strings as of right now. So this is by Eric. Hey man, I've been watching your channel for a while now. Keep up the great work. One quick question. I'm a sophomore in high school and I've been playing tennis for about 10 years now. Do you think it would be beneficial for me to play on my high school team or can I just train, play tournaments on my own and grind? Um, I would say the choice is up to you. Um, if I was you, I would play my high school team just because it's extra matches that you don't have to pay for, essentially. If you go to tournaments on your own, that's extra money that you're throwing away. Not necessarily throwing away because it is beneficial to you, but you could reduce the cost by just playing your high school matches. If, however, the competition is not up to your level, I would say try and think about playing other tournaments as well. Um, and my advice would be actually to, to play your high school season and then play other tournaments going into the summer because to my knowledge American high school season tennis season is not too long so yeah I would say mix them together okay the next question is by Daniel um, hey man I got a question for you I'm considered to play college tennis and my coach says I have the potential to do it if I wanted to do college tennis and I have to sacrifice many things I guess and I don't know if it's really worth it you're a college player and I would like to know if you had to sacrifice many things in order to be 100% sure of yourself that you wanted to do this. Yeah, 100%. I think I had to sacrifice more before going to college than I had to sacrifice during college. Um, before going to college, I did miss out on a lot of um, gatherings and let's say parties or just hanging out with friends because I had training or had a tournament the next day. Um, I had to sacrifice um, a lot of time spent with friends and family just because I wanted to be the best version of myself and train and do my fitness and go to the gym and practice and play matches. Uh, leading up to the summer before I came to college, I did play a lot of tournaments and I sacrificed a lot of time. I sacrificed basically my whole summer and dedicated it to tennis and tournaments and trying to get to the best college I can possibly. But yeah, I would say it does come with great responsibility. And then once you're in college, of course, you can't go crazy and just go to every single massive college party that there is. You're gonna have to be disciplined and practice and schedule and manage your time well because there is school um, as a factor and there is tennis and training as a factor and then there's matches as well so yeah you're not going to get the same experience as a normal college student but I think a student athlete experience is probably better just because you get to play the sport that you love and honestly um, for me like playing tennis and being on the court is probably one of the, the things I want to do most anyway so it's not really a sacrifice like it's just something I want to do it's, it's, a, it's a choice it's an opinion so if you have to sacrifice time um, then tennis is probably not for you like you're gonna have to want to enjoy it and be on the court and actually have the mentality of oh, I don't want to be anywhere else right now so it's by David Griffin hey man you're you're an inspiration I'm 16 play tennis I was wondering if you got a scholarship to play tennis in college or no uh, yeah, I got a scholarship to Queen's University. You have a second show, have your second show. You, you show a bit as a sponsor. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I, um, I got a scholarship to Queen's University of Charlotte um, and that's probably the main reason I decided to come to US college. This next question is interesting. Um, are you planning on competing after college? Yeah, I did have the idea of competing after college, uh, maybe taking one or two years out after after graduation and just grinding on the future circuit right now i don't know if that's the best option for me um, i'm gonna have to consider my options after graduation it depends if i get an internship a job or if um if my level is high enough to to say okay i actually want to try and give this a shot so it's still a, a lingering question which i have to answer myself um, i think right now my main focus is just to play two whole seasons because i haven't done that yet and see where my level's at and see if I can get my confidence and match, match play up to where I feel confident that I can play some futures. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still an unanswered question in my own head, so I can't really give you a full answer. I guess you're just gonna have to wait and follow me on this journey and find out. Okay, next question is, hi Johan, have you ever thought about tuning your pro staff, such as adding lead tape, etc.? Yeah. Is this okay for college tennis? Um, I have never thought about tuning my, my Wilson just because I like the way it is right now. Um, I know a lot of people, even my roommate Jan, he, uh, he customized his own racket, put lead tape around it and put lead tape on the grip because he likes it head heavy, uh, sorry, um, bottom heavy. But 
for me, I just I just like it the way it is right now, the plain Counterville version, and I don't see myself tuning it unless I really need to. So the next question is, what model A6 do you usually wear? I'm thinking about getting a Resolution 8, but I'm concerned about the weight. So yeah, I think I used the Resolution 8 before I got these Nike Cage uh, 4, and I did really like them. Um, the weight was a little bit heavy compared to the Nike, but they felt, uh, they, they felt a little bit like the Adidas Barricade. However, they did last a really long time, so that's why I, I liked them. And their price wasn't too expensive, so that's why I, I decided to get them. But then these were on sale, the Night Cage 4, and I decided to change up a little bit, and I really love these shoes. They're so light, they're so comfortable. Um, I like them better than the A6. Okay, the next question is, when did you start playing? Um, I started playing tennis properly when I was seven years old. Uh, my mom signed me up to a local club because I was a little bit overweight and she decided that she wanted me to lose weight, essentially. Um, I think I can pull up a photo of myself when I was younger. It's pretty embarrassing, but yeah, I'll do it anyway. Um, so yeah, there's me somewhere on the screen. So yeah, I was pretty overweight, so I decided to play some tennis. Well, my mum decided to, to put me in tennis and I really started enjoying it, so I carried on playing. Lost weight, obviously, and um, yeah, just been playing ever since. I started playing tournaments when I was probably like eight or nine years old, because I picked up tennis quite quickly and my hand-eye coordination was pretty good so started playing I won my first couple of tournaments I kind of got addicted to that feeling and played ever since how do you structure a good lesson with a coach um, honestly not sure about this one I mean it's up to the coach uh, obviously if you know specific areas that you need to work on then mention it to the coach and he can kind of prioritize those over others in a lesson but it's all up to him and what he sees or she sees in your game. Um, when I was with Simon, Simon structured all my lessons. I just turned up and was ready to play full out. Uh, of course, there were some moments where I spoke to Simon about certain things and certain areas of my game which I want to improve personally and he agreed on me or disagreed with me. Um, but it was usually after tournaments and I kind of just tried to evaluate my game and see where we can go from there. Will you make some day in the life vlog and vlog about playing against colleges individual tournaments? Yeah, I would love to. I'm just waiting for this whole pandemic to be over so that colleges can start competing again or at least our college can start competing again. And then I'll do vlogs every week playing different matches and against different schools and hopefully keep you guys up to date. Not like I did freshman year because freshman year was a bit sporadic. I did a vlog here and there. This time I promise I'm going to do it every week. Uh, playing against different colleges. So I'm just waiting hopefully for this pandemic to be over and we can start playing again um, I am considering doing a day in the life soon of my current schedule because I am still going to the gym I am still practicing with my team. I'm still yeah, focusing on my nutrition and then on top of that I'm doing my schoolwork and my internship as well. So uh, yeah balancing a lot of things right now, but um, it's going well So I'm considering doing a day in the life soon Okay, this is a question that was actually uh, replied to saying that they really wanted an answer to it. So here it goes. I have a question for you. How many hours do you play and how did you decide that you wanted to go to college tennis? To do college tennis. Okay, um, before, before coming to college, I played a minimum of two hours a day on court and I did, I tried to do an hour of gym or fitness every day. Some days I take a break from fitness and just do the tennis. But, you know, I was doing two hours, I would say on court every day. And then that summer leading up to coming to college, I did more. I did one session in the morning, one session in the afternoon, and then played tournaments on the weekends just to prepare me for the workload that I was uh, going to experience here. Now in college, I probably play an hour and a half on court a day, sometimes two, depending on our schedule. And then I do gym every day uh, for an hour. And what was the, oh yeah. And the next question was, how did I decide to come to college tennis? Well, I was 15 years old and I was speaking to Simon from Top Tennis Training and I was telling him my ambitions and goals in tennis and I wanted to be a pro and I wanted to work hard and elevate my game because as you know, before I was 15, I was rubbish at tennis. So yeah, I was, I was speaking to Simon and he suggested going, he suggested the idea of going to college tennis because um, it would give me a degree. So I won't have the pressure of playing on tour without any future or un, like, I just won't have any certainty. Um, and it will allow my body and my mind and maturity on the tennis court to develop more so that when I am 22, 23 and graduate from college and I play these Futures events, I'll be more mature and ready for the men's game. So that's the main reason I decided to go to college. Okay, uh, this question is by Alice. She asked, who's your all-time favorite tennis player and why? Uh, my all-time favorite tennis player is Grigor Dimitrov. 
Um, I have a funny story about Dimitrov actually. Um, so when I was 10 years old and Grigor was 19, Grigor, if you're watching this, is the Gavay. I knew, well, I had family friends who knew his girlfriend at the time and she invited me to go watch Grigor at Eastbourne, which is a tournament in uh, England, a uh, grass court event before Wimbledon. And of course, I was super excited. I was 10 years old. I think I have a photo of it somewhere. Hopefully I'll put it up on the screen somewhere here. And yeah, I met Grigor that day. We had lunch together. I watched him play tennis. We had a conversation, I remember it. Um, I spent basically the whole day with him at the tournament and I was super inspired. Watched him practice before the match. Watched him play a match against Anderson actually. And I, I remember him winning. It was the third round, I think. Um, so yeah, it was super cool, great experience. And since then, he's just been my favorite tennis player because he is from my home country as well. And I love the way he plays. How can you not like him? So, yeah. Next question. Do you want to be in the ATP ever in your life? Yeah, I would love to be in the ATP if I, um, if I could. I would just love to be involved in that organization in general, just because it's, I mean, it's an amazing organization and tennis is a beautiful sport. So, of course, I would like to be involved, ideally as a tennis pro, as a tennis professional. Um, just experiencing that whole that whole atmosphere going out into stadiums and fans watching you and just playing against the best players in the world that's an unbelievable experience um, probably the majority of tennis players never get to experience that and it's a shame because tennis is one of the hardest sports in the world but yeah uh, everyone should strive for it and I would love to experience that one day would I experience it most likely not but you never know, so just keep just keep working hard and see where life takes you. What do you think about Team winning his first major? Um, personally, I don't really like Dominic Team. Just I don't relate to his game. But I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, but I am. I mean, I respect him a lot as a as a player and as a person who works really hard. So congratulations to him. I mean, it's amazing and he deserves it. Honestly, uh, out of every tennis player, he probably deserves it. One of the most. Okay, this is an interesting one and not to do with tennis. Uh, what were your grades like in secondary school before you went to university? Um, I would say my grades in high school are pretty good. I mean, I got, I think I did, I did GCSEs in England, so I got about three A's, a couple of B's. I didn't, I, I don't get, I didn't get any C's. So yeah, I mean, as long as you do good in, in school, you should be okay. And then you had to take the SAT and the, uh, Think, I think it was just the SAT to, to get into American college and I got like a 1,200 I think it was so it was way above average so I, I managed to get in pretty comfortably but I wasn't the smartest person in school um, I just kind of studied when I had to and got my grades and that's about it never really never really excelled too much but I uh, I did my best okay interesting question any competitions coming up Yes, I literally just signed up today for some UTR events in Charlotte because I just want to play again. I haven't played in a while. I haven't had a competitive match since Anderson, which was the last match in March. Um, so I'm intrigued to see where I am right now with my level and I just want to be out competing again. So yeah, I signed up for a couple UTR matches. Those matches basically match up um, an opponent to your skill level and you just organize a time and date and play them. So if I do play them, I will definitely make sure to vlog it and keep you guys up to date on how I do. That's gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about me and got to, to know me a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna be doing more of these in the future, so just drop a question. I'm gonna be mostly doing them at the end of my vlogs, but I might do another whole Q&A in the future if I get more interesting questions. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.